as NTBs and find solutions to challenges relating to trade between the two countries. This was during a meeting at State House in Tebe where Her Excellency Samia Suluhu Hassan, President of uh, Tanzania, on a two-day visit to the Republic of Uganda uh, at the invitation of His Excellency President Yori Museveni. Now, a delegation from the International Beg your pardon, let's take a look at that. The heads of state noted the growing total trade between Uganda and the United Republic of Tanzania and directed the responsible ministers to immediately remove any outstanding non-tariff barriers in order to fully harness the Uganda-Tanzania trade potential. The heads of state were joined by ministers and senior government officials and discussed bilateral, regional as well as international matters of interest to the two countries. Our discussion covered a range of issues from political, peace and security to economic development, transportation infrastructure, education and health sectors. During our discussion we reaffirmed on appreciation for the long-standing and excellent relations between Tanzania and Uganda. In the area of marine and road transport, the heads of state applauded the reopening of the Mwanza Port Bell Kampala route, which is now fully operational and has greatly reduced the transit time from Dar es Salaam to Kampala, which now takes only four days down from the previous nine days, thus reducing the cost of doing business. Their Excellencies also welcomed the commissioning of the construction of the Mutukula regional market, which will enhance trade and improve the livelihoods of citizens of Uganda and Tanzania and other countries in the region. The heads of state noted and welcomed the implementation of the East African crude oil pipeline project. They also witnessed the signing of two memoranda of understanding an intergovernmental memorandum of understanding in the field of development of the 400 kV. Masaka Mutukula Chaka Nyakanazi Mwanza transmission line and a memorandum of understanding on defense and security cooperation. His Excellency President Yuri Kaguta Museveni expressed his gratitude to Her Excellency President Samia Suluhu Hassan for honoring his invitation and for the fruitful discussions they held. Tanzania and Uganda are fraternal countries since time immemorial. So therefore, our work is mainly to concentrate on security, infrastructure, and the economy, the Biashara. And that's what exactly we are doing when we are here. Her Excellency Samia Suluhu Hassan extended an invitation to His Excellency President Yuri Kaguta Museveni to visit the United Republic of Tanzania on a date to be communicated through diplomatic channels. I also wish to note with gratitude the warm welcome and gracious hospitality accorded to me and my entire delegation since um, our arrival in this um, beautiful country. Michael Jordan Lukomwa. UBC News. Now, President Yori Museveni has said that Uganda and Africa are interested in nuclear power for electricity and not nuclear weapons. He was meeting a delegation from the International Atomic Energy Agency led by the Director Division of Nuclear Power for Africa, Ms. Lynn du uh, accompanied by Mikhail Shudovok, the Deputy Director General and Head of the Department of Nuclear Energy and Mehmet Asian from the uh, same agency uh, met President Museveni to update him on how far Uganda has gone in nuclear power production. Now the meeting which was attended by State Minister for Energy Okasai Opolot was a state house in Tebe. A brief to the president, at, I beg your pardon, a brief to the president shows that Uganda has so far trained 22 people at master's degree level in nuclear science. President Museveni uh, said that the country would soon start a school to train lower cadres in atomic energy and thereafter embark on building the first atomic energy plant in Uganda. Has got 1.5 million megawatts of electricity. Uh, therefore, 
strategically speaking, we cannot depend on hydro. Uh, now, in the past, of course, there is wind, there is solar, but in the past, the cost per unit was still high. I hear it is now coming down. But in the past, it was, it was high. At one time, uh, solar was 40 cents per, per unit, per kilowatt hour. Then it, has, it came to 16 cents. Okay. okay, so you are satisfied with our preparations? Yes, and I, I, I don't know if you... <laughs> It is, as, as, as we said, phase one is uh, really where you build. After you will have to take the decision to go to nuclear, then you have phase two. So ladies and gentlemen, the INIR phase one mission last year concluded that Uganda is committed to developing the required infrastructure in a coordinated approach. Uganda drafted an energy policy which includes nuclear power and established a nuclear uh, energy program um, implementation office, what we call the NEPIO mechanism, that involves a wide range of different stakeholders. The NEPIO has completed several studies on different infrastructure issues and drafted the nuclear power roadmap to Uganda, for Uganda, which includes uh, re recommendations uh, on the necessary infrastructure that should be put in place in a timely manner. The government has directed secondary science teachers to call off the strike as they wait for their salary increment to be affected in the next financial year. Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Dr. Chris Bariomonsi, says the 735 billion shillings needed for salary in enhancement for scientists will be fixed in the budget of next financial year, starting 1st July 2022. Now, the scientists went on strike on Monday as schools opened, demanding government to honor its pledge of salary enhancement. Philip Aguta has more. While addressing the media at Uganda Media Centre in Kampala, the Minister for ICT Chris Bariumsi says it was too early for the secondary science teachers to strike because the agreement was that their salaries will be increased effective 1st July 2022, which has not reached yet. Secondary school science teachers I saw yesterday in the media that they are going on a strike because their increment has not been effected. But if we say we are proposing an increment, an enhancement of salaries beginning 1st July, why do you strike before 1st July has come? The minister urges secondary science teachers to return to class. So our commitment remains total. The area pledged by the government remains as it is. So I call upon the science teachers to get back to school, classroom and teach because government has not deviated, has not reneged from its area position of enhancing the pay of scientists including secondary school teachers and health workers. Government will require more than 700 billion shillings to enhance salaries for both science teachers and scientists across the country, as directed by President Museveni two years ago. In the new salary structure, the lowest paid scientist will earn 4 million shillings. In that debate, why scientists? Well, I must declare interest that I'm a scientist myself. I am not making this argument because I am a scientist, but we all appreciate that the development, the transformation of society which has taken place over time has been driven by science. For instance, the discovery of fire, you know what that one contributed to the development process. That was a scientific innovation, a scientific discovery. You can speak of when we had the corona, for instance, COVID, which was ravaging the whole world. Where did the solution come from? It was from science. 
According to cabinet, government has a wider draft plan to enhance salaries for all civil servants in phases starting with scientists. Philip Aguta, UBC News in Kampala. Now, Cabinet has been challenged to admit that they made mistakes in order to enable correction when the need arises. This appeal follows a recent coffee agreement that is reported to have been signed with controversy putting Finance Minister Mattia Kasaija on the spot. Now, the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Monks, allays fears of Ugandans over the delayed debate of the Tread Committee report on the controversial coffee agreement. The Speaker of Parliament, Anita Among Anit, has made a communication. I want to assure you members of this house, the report is ready and the report will be presented to the house. Nobody should imagine that we are suffocating the report. We are here for the people outside there. We are representatives of people, so many millions of people out. So when you start with those sentiments, it is not very good for you. She is concerned that Parliament is faulted for delaying debate of the Trade Committee report on the controversial coffee agreement, taking a swipe on some ministers. Among called for admission of wrongdoings for easy correction when need arose. I want to urge my brothers on the front desk. Where there are mistakes, just admit there are mistakes. We correct mistakes. We move on. I mean, we are all human beings bound to make mistakes. And if we make a mistake, it does not mean we criminalize you. But we can make sure that we correct. So the report will be out soon and you will debate it. This communication seems to have been directed at Finance and Planning Minister Matia Kasaija. He is reported to have been directly involved in the signing of the Said Coffee Agreement. You remember how former Vice President Gilbert Bukenya ended up in Ruzira, Maxon? <laughs> the Honorable Jim Muez was in Ruzira. <laughs> Even ministers can go there. At your age, you shouldn't go to jail over an agreement. So therefore, Madam Speaker, I want to thank you for giving a motherly advice to people who are on the front bench. I don't know whether we are proceeding well, because many times, like an issue of coffee has been on contention, and the Honorable Minister of Finance, Kasaja, has been heard addressing media houses concerning it. If the battle is here, come and we fight here, and we see who is the man. I don't want to see... Elder Matia Kasaiji on handcuff being taken to Zira. And when you start saying that Parliament does not have powers to do anything, please, this House is the House that can make any decision, good or bad. The Speaker of Parliament, Anita Among, agreed with the legislators, some of whom demanded to know the exact date of the debate. Because you have vividly put it that uh, this. Uh, report will be tabled soon, which I appreciate. But the one million dollar question, which is a, a jig, so puzzle, is about how long is soon. Don't cry more than they, they, they believed. Because maybe some of us are more believed than you are. We are coffee growers. So when you start crying, when for you, you grow kamalewa, and yet for us, we grow coffee. The Parliamentary Trade Committee investigation into the controversial coffee agreement was chaired by Mbarara South Division Member of Parliament, Mwine Mpaka Ruamirama. The report is said to be ready, only awaiting presentation before the House. Henry Okrut, UBC. Meanwhile, Parliament has tasked Ministry of Education and Sports to look into the alleged exorbitant charges and indiscriminate hike of registration fees by several schools. In a matter of national importance presented by Kalungu West Member of Parliament, Joseph Sewungu, many schools have set their own registration fees. 
You see, you never will charge its official fee. Uganda National Examination Board set October to December 2022 for conducting the national examinations. One of the requirements for every student to sit for final exams is to accomplish registration by paying the required fees as prescribed by UNEB. UNEB registration charges for primary living examination or primary seven is 34,000. 164,000 for senior four candidates and 186,000 for senior six candidates. It has come to the attention of Parliament that schools have set their own registration charges for candidates. Right, Honorable Speaker, whereas UNEB is charging 34,000, the parents who are overcharged by the schools. Until to date, the examination fees have not been varied for different categories. Some schools attach the charges to the introduction of online registration, which they say requires purchase of internet data bundles. Meanwhile, State Minister for Education in charge of sports, Dan Samson Obua, clarified that online registration is only a second option and cannot be an excuse to hiking examination charges. That we never shifted from the original system of Form X, and now they are mandating all schools to register online, yet in many of our districts, we don't even have internet there. And as a result, most of these schools are charging more money than what we are demanding as you name. For registration, there are two windows. And we thought by introducing the online in addition to the traditional system, we would even cut cost. Because some of the schools have been saying, now when they pay examination fee, someone must travel to Kampala. That is why there are two windows for schools to exhaust. Those who can register online, it is well. Those who can register through the traditional way, it is also accepted. So According to the UNEB Act 2021, Section 33 states that it is an offense to charge fees not prescribed by UNEB on registration. Exorbitant charges are not only charged on registration, but also indiscriminately charged on school fees. Parliament has tasked the Minister of Education to guide and regulate the charges below and above which schools should charge. The a document as to why there is that increased amount and what we can do to improve on that. Because the increase by schools is unfair. It is not UNEV that is increasing. It is the schools, but that is out of a consequential effect. The normal registration of candidates at all levels, as per UNEB, commenced in February 2022 and will end in May with a provision of one month ahead for late registration with respective charges. Susan Naong and Gloria Gwitabinji reporting for ABC TV. Researchers from the University of Michigan have handed over the judiciary archives containing land titles and catalogues of had and soft copies dating back 100 years for Mengo Magistrates Court. The Judiciary Permanent Secretary, Pius Bigirimana, commended the University of Michigan. Is Researchers from the University of Michigan in the United States of America, led by Saudi and Kenya, and Professor Derek Peterson, have handed over to the judiciary archives of over 100 years from Mingo Magistrates Court. Among the archives handed over include land titles of 1900 to 1960s, hard and soft copies catalogues, and a report of the research conducted on the archives. The researchers team leader Saudi and Kenya highlighted on the aims of organizing and recovering the archives of Mengo Court to Uganda. And these specifically we have done for actors role models for other archives. For researchers like me, uh, we have interest because we write about what we find in these archives. But for economic uh, aspect of it, uh, efficient practices based on institutional memory, understanding of financial distribution, uh, valuable expertise, research and uh, consultancy. Democracy offers transparency because people get to know what is in, in there. Now Kenya also expressed the need to digitalize archives of various courts in Uganda. Because one, they are very old, very fragile, and two, they are very important records uh, of the judiciary because they have a lot of history in connection to uh, the colonial period, the land uh, all the land history is in this particular archive. 
a short time is to finalize an agreement with the Uganda National Archive. That's what we usually do when we are transferring the records there. Support the digitization of the Mengo Archive. And then long time training of staff across the judiciary and other courts in Uganda. The permanent secretary to judiciary, Payasu Bijirmana, commended the researchers and promised that the archives would be safe. We have got sufficient space, smart space. Our duty now is to make sure that we get the shelves and the boxes where to have those records kept. We have got a long-term plan of constructing our own archives as judiciary. It's part of the program that we have in our budget. If in the medium term we get the money, we shall build our own. So don't get worried. All the all the records in all courts in the whole country will be kept. The chief regis Wasala Ngasio says the process will make a new reorganization of all court records. I'm very optimistic that today presents a beginning of a long journey for the reorganization generally of all records in the judiciary, especially through a standardized cataloging system. I think we all agree that we cannot have so many systems of cataloging. We need a certain standard so that whether you're in Kampala or you are in Gulu or you are in Bali, records are kept in a similar way and therefore retrieval also becomes easy the same way. God allow me to thank you for digging up the dust because in that dust, as we have talked before, you were able to dig up some of the very, very important uh, records but also documents, including titles and other really important documents, which I'm happy today presents an opportunity for us to receive them. According to the Memorandum of Understanding between Judiciary and the University of Michigan, it was agreed that the archives will be transferred to the National Archives Center for safety. Nantong Rebecca, Nama Monde Deborah, UBC News. Today in history. On this day in history, Nelson Mandela was inaugurated as the first democratic president of South Africa. This happened after South Africa's national democratic elections in April 1994. Mandela was sworn in as South Africa's president at the Union Building in Pretoria on 10th May 1994, replacing then outgoing National Party leader F.W.D. Clark. For as little as 13,000 Ugandan shillings per month. Go TV. Great stories. Zidiwano. Go TV Uganda. Love it. Even with my grandson, a doctor at my side, I struggled to get the help I needed. But he saw something that day. He began to work day and night. He wouldn't quit, even when people said no. He wouldn't stop fighting. He knew something had to change, and his vision was bigger than anyone could imagine. He made it possible to receive quality medical services anywhere in Uganda by simply using a phone. 
This is a story of a regular Ugandan just like you, who harnessed the power of technology to provide a solution for us. How about you tell us your story? UG needs more of you. To share your story, visit airtel.co.ug slash UG needs more of you or call or SMS 162. Airtel, the smartphone network. Mirinda! an ice cold bottle of Mirinda Orange at any shop or supermarket near you. Mirinda Orange, the taste that makes you go ORG. Beat the back to school hustle today. Pay school fees conveniently using Airtel money. Dial star 185 hush. Select option 6, school fees. Select to pay using bridge schools, school pay or peg pay. Select option 1, pay fees. Enter student number. Enter the amount. Enter the PIN number to complete payment. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. Welcome back. You are still watching News Tonight. Uganda Revenue Authority has registered a shortfall of over 1 trillion shillings in the first three quarters of the fiscal year 2021-22. The shortfall is attributed to sluggish recovery from COVID-19 pandemic geopolitical uh, uh, effects and economic constraints that are forcing the public to cut their expenditure. Dennis Segoa has more. In the first nine months of the current financial year, Uganda Revenue Authority had a tax target of 16 trillion 532 billion shillings. The amount represents about 74% of the 22.3 trillion shillings revenue target set by government in the 2021-2022 fiscal year. Nine months down the road, the tax body has reported relatively good performance. During the period of March to July, the actual net revenue collections were 15.466 trillion, representing 69.16% of the annual target. A significant growth in revenue of Uganda shillings, 1.49 trillion, which reflects 10.66% was registered. This is despite falling short of their revenue target by about 4%, which is slightly over 1 trillion shillings. According to John Musinguzi, the Commissioner General URA, majority of these sectors in the first three quarters registered positive growth, but significant revenue declines were registered as well in some sectors. We witnessed underperformance mainly from the construction sector by 74.8 billion, beer sector by 49.39 billion, spirits and warages by 48.38 billion, and the soft drinks by 43.72 billion. The real estate, the real estate activities also registered um, a decline of 43.13 billion. As the revenue body strives to achieve its target, it's faced by several key challenges. This includes the effects of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, tax compliance and low disposable income due to economic constraints. We are beginning to feel the impact. Um, we used to, in a quarter, we used to do about four vessels of fuel coming through the port of Mombasa. As I speak now, we are seeing one vessel. So which means that um, the impact on, is going to be felt more on fuel. And already you've seen the rise in prices on the pump price for fuel. 
And that is how I can attribute the impact. And you know, fuel drives almost everything in the economy. With just over two months to close the 2021-2022 financial year, URA has an uphill task of collecting 5.9 trillion shillings. Dennis Igor for UBC News. And State Minister for Economic Monitoring Peter Guang has warned civil servants to desist from sabotaging government programs. He was inspecting different government programs in Namayomba, Sub County, Wakiso District. Minister for Economic Monitoring Peter Guang has toured Buliana Village, where money was allocated to construct a community bore hall. Ogwanga found that no water source had been dug in the village, which left the residents demanding for water. <laughs> A hole which they have repaired. Wagwanga immediately summoned the Wakiso district water engineer Isaac Galabuzi, who was arrested yesterday to explain the proceedings concerning the borehole. Galabuzi, however, played hide and seek games as he took them to a nearby village, Chidugala, where he had hired an engineer to repair the only borehole in the morning. <laughs> Oh, what an border. Residents told the minister Galabu's story was all lies, prompting the minister to order for his arrest. First time engineer, two things. We met the residents of the area. You brought us to a different village. That's point number one. According to the documents which we have, it is meant to talk about Buliani. What is the name of this place? Chidugala. This is Chidugala. They are telling us they worked on it yesterday. Has this thing been working? At Nachitokolo Health Center 3, the pit latrines were in a bad state, with the nurses quarters in a slow state, and the head of construction Wakiso district, Lydia Namutebi, was also arrested. Ogwanga's next destination was St. Matthias Bananyo Primary School, where he was disappointed with the facilities state. After a period of two years, the facility was commissioned. Ogwanga joined the Minister Kasula Lumumba, where Namayumba Town Council headquarters is being constructed. However, there was a verbal exchange with the town council leaders who accused the ministers of intimidating them. <laughs> You first take away that kutisa tisa. There is nowhere in Uganda where public money goes and it should not be accounted for. James Sewanka and Bonama Yumba Town Council Clerk was arrested for failing to make a submission for the project's work. Minister Peter Gwanga and Kasula Lumumba warned the civil servants against mismanaging government funds. But for me as a, a person, I'm not satisfied with that work and that's why I've requested that there's going to be an engineering audit. To look at value for money. We've looked at issues to do with water. In the Mayumba Town Council, there is a challenge that the water sources they have are not enough. By press time, three Mayumba Town Council officials had been arrested by State House Anti Corruption Unit, led by Brigadier Henry Rusoke. Was as a government, every shilling counts. Take seriously the issue of fraud in the government, abuse of office, and the way we do this work, we don't just come from nowhere. My Van Juko for UBC News. <laughs> and Uganda will launch a satellite in August 2022. Uh, the Prime Minister Robin Anambanja congratulated scientists upon this milestone at a bigger pardon. The Prime Minister, Robin Anabanja, congratulated scientists upon this milestone at the handover ceremony held at the Prime Minister's office. And other 12 African countries in the space technology race will prop into orbit. The first satellite dubbed Pearl African Sat-1 with expected launch in August 2022. At the hand of a ceremony, the Prime Minister Robin Anabanja congratulated Ugandan scientists upon this achievement. I congratulate our Ugandan scientists, our brothers, who have just made us proud by developing the first ever satellite known as Power Africa Sat-1. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to me this is historical. 
I thank the leadership of the Ministry of Technology, Science and Technology and Innovation for driving this effort and ensuring that Uganda also joins other nations that are using this kind of technology to solve our problems. The Minister for Science, Technology and Innovation, Monica Musenero, noted that this move will increase Uganda's competitive advantage in technology. Because we might see it as another something. But we have put our foot on a new sphere of science. Not only as something we are talking about, but as something that we have owned. This symbolic event of handing over this first ever satellite built by Ugandans and for Uganda sets off a totally new horizon of operation for us. The State Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Chris Bariomus, urged Ugandans to embrace science and technology. And appeal to ourselves and the rest of the country that let us support science, let us put resources in the area of science, and that's how we shall move faster and attain accelerated development. If Uganda wants to be part of the community that is moving very fast, so we must move very fast, we must run, but running means we shall sweat, but we are prepared as a government to walk the talk and therefore my duty this morning is to mobilize all of us. The satellite will address gaps in information dissemination, security threats, among others. So with the satellite you can carry out several measurements and probably without the Muntuawansi having to wait for the news bulletin to know that there will be a landslide or there will be rainfall, the message is relayed to their phone from the satellite almost instantaneously. So that this Omontuawansi uh, doesn't have to rely on an intermediary to receive some of this information. The Pearl African Sat-1 will be launched to the International Space Station, where it will be deployed into low Earth orbit at a 400-kilometer altitude to start a life journey by August 2022. Sada Mubale, UBC News, Kampala. Meanwhile, the Minister for Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Matia Kasaija, has launched new mortgage and housing regulations in Kampala. He says the initiative will enable savers borrow money from their accrued benefits and get loans to build houses. It is good etiquette for a retired civil servant to have a decent residence upon retirement, although it is hampered by excessive demands that leave them in rented houses. Minister for Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Matia Kaseja, says the new Uganda Retirement Benefits Regulatory Authority law will prepare savers have a good life in their own houses and businesses in their old age. We shall help you to go to a bank, borrow money to put up a structure or to complete a structure if you have already started. You are commanded. The saving is there. Now we are wanting to take advantage of the money which the financial institution can, 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 can lend you to go and prepare your retirement in a good, respectable little house. The minister eyed salary earners to start saving. Under the Uganda Retirement Benefits Regulatory Authority Act of 2011, the mortgage and housing regulation helped retirees acquire housing loans to construct a decent place of residence. It's to us it's a very important opportunity, but I want to emphasize that it's a great opportunity to the members of all retirement benefit schemes in this country, who are now amounting to almost uh, 2.8 million. But number two, because you already have a liquid assets, the pricing of that loan to, to not to be at that high rates. National housing statistics show a deficit of 2.4 million housing units and 900,000 are substandard. Joshua Kagoro for UBC News. 
With that, we we'll take a quick break. When we return, business news. This is News Tonight. The best entertainment for any budget. With Go TV, you will have great entertainment for as little as 13,000 Uganda shillings per month. Go TV, great stories. Zidiwano, Go TV Uganda, love it. Get connected today with the My Airtel 4G smartphone and enjoy free data for one whole year worth 86,500 Uganda shillings. That's free 2GB for the first month and free 1GB for the next 11 months. At 250,000 Uganda shillings with free data for one whole year worth 86,500 shillings making the effective price of the 4G phone 163,500 shillings only Airtel, the smartphone network Be alert do not share your Airtel money pin number with anyone. Airtel Uganda employees will never ask for your Airtel money pin number on call, SMS, or by email. All SIM card registrations, SIM card verifications, or SIM swaps are done at clearly branded Airtel shops and not on phone. To report any fraudulent activity, please call 100 immediately. The official calling number for Airtel promotions is 0200-100-100. Stay alert on Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. Water gives life. Water is life. But not all water is created equal. Refresh yourself with the new quality Nirvana Package drinking water and fuel you and your passion to go further in life. Visit a shop near you and grab a 250ml at 500 shillings, 500ml at 1,000 shillings, 1 1.5 litres at 2,000 shillings or the 20-litre jumbo bottle at 19,000 shillings. Nirvana is a product of Crown Beverages Limited, the makers of Pepsi products. Beat the back-to-school hustle today. Pay school fees conveniently using Airtel money. Star 185 hash. Select option 6. School fees. Select to pay using bridge schools, school pay or back pay. Select option 1, pay fees. Enter student number. Enter the amount. Enter the PIN number to complete payment. Airtel money. Instant, secure, borderless. to play let's go we glad you came yeah. because we love to Order. share oh. let's have some fun what should we try next to oh. everyone oh. because we love <laughs>
Welcome back. Now in business news, the Federation of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises is and uh, rather and the international labor organization have dispersed a team of trainers to equip small business holders to manage loans and other grants the federation executive director john walugembe appeals to government to train targeted beneficiaries of different projects and that's before dispersing monies 200 micro businesses from refugee host communities and refugee camps are the main target of this financial technical support. These benefited from the initial support of $200 for the business boost. The context of those businesses is a lot. So these businesses use that money in order to get through the pandemic. Now, since we are past that now, we are saying these businesses need to grow and this is why we are now going ahead to provide this entrepreneurship training using the, the gender and enterprise together training curriculum. The team of 16 has been retold, ready to spearhead the Get Ahead program of building capacity of micro businesses with special financial management skills. Train trainers in a, a package like this one Get Ahead is, is uh, gender and entrepreneurship together. It's one of the many packages. We train trainers. Trainers train entrepreneurs. So these people who have been trained, 16 of them from here, they, have, uh, they, will be, they are being commissioned to go and train one, the 200 entrepreneurs who got the grant. But they are also it's part of our capacity building, FSME, to, to give the support. And we are demonstrating that stimulus should not end at money. I know all of you every time you come here, well, how are the SMEs doing? Did they receive stimulus? Did they receive stimulus? Stimulus should go beyond money. The Federation of Small and Medium Sized Enterprises recommend technical support provision to the public before being enrolled to any of government development programs. We are setting the pace and we are telling government giving money alone is not enough. You need to skill these people so that they are able to run viable businesses, they are able to create viable jobs. This project is targeting refugees and forcibly displaced persons in districts of Isinglo, Madi Akolo, Terego and Arua. It is expected to expand the scope of employment in these areas. Abdul Nasir Lubama, UBC News. And now in sports, organizers of the Fort Bet Real Stir Sports Monthly Awards have recognized the best athletes of last month. The best of April came from five disciplines, as our reporter highlights. For being at the top of others in their trade, five Ugandan sports personalities have been recognized for efforts in the month of April. From football, Ondu Paraka striker Mohamed Shaban aged all others, while Africa Rugby Sevens champion Aaron Ofoiroth added the league crown with heathens and was unmatched among his peers. And I would like to thank uh, the coaches, both the national team Sevens coaches and uh, heathens coaches. Uh, lastly, I'd like even to thank my teammates because uh, we have really worked together and that's why we have won this award. In volleyball, new male club champions, Orange Blockbusters Club, had Sharif Nabanji in imperious form and indeed deserved the volleyball gong. My team OBB selected me as their commander and in turn, in the return, it was teamwork that led to this award. Others recognized were Uganda Christian University Canons basket player Jerry Kayanga and runner Maslin Chelengat, who is in the form of her life. Awards organizer Isaac Mokasa is glad his innovation has boosted competition and vows to make them more glamorous. We wanted, first of all, to motivate these guys to, to compete. 
It has to be ours. Then the guys from Onduparaka, we are telling me it's ours. We scored six, the other one scored four. You see the competitiveness. Come on, basketball, how it happened. Since inception, the Fortbet Real Star Awards have benefited more than 100 players with plex and cash to inspire performance. Sudat Kaye, UBC News. Well, that does it for news tonight. Let's take a look at the top stories once again. Samia Suluhu agreed to address non-tariff barriers affecting trade. Government tells teachers to end strike payments for increased salaries to start 1st July. While Parliament teams cabinet on the controversial coffee agreement. And in sports, Fort Bet Realster awards best sports personalities of April. Well, that does it for news tonight. For now, we do return at 10 o'clock with more details. I am Rodan Gonzi, Elizabeth Nakakoni on sign language. Up next is the Uganda Turkish Expo, uh, Timex Nutritional Center that was to air uh, at this time, will not and will rather be aired next week on Tuesday at 9 to 10 p.m.